in this video, we're going to continue from the previous 6a video and move on to the 6b. We're going to up-res our low poly geometry with a high poly one and transfer all the RBD simulation data onto this high polygon geometry. This optimization step will save you so much time. It makes development a lot quicker because more of the iterations comes from the tweaking of the RBD simulations parameter by parameter, and you'll find that you're rerunning the simulation over and over again. It makes sense to use as low polygon geometry as possible for your RBD simulations. In in order to speed up the workflow. Basic concept number 6b, RBD deformation. You can see that the soft constraints are holding the pieces together while breaking the glue constraints, which is perfect. But how do we actually get this into something that's more clean? Because this is obviously fractured halfway. We don't want to see these lines. We don't want to see these blast pieces come apart. Let's go back to here. And uh, let me put... Now let's take the original geometry, which is tube over here, right here. Object to destroy. Okay, we're going to take this and instead of me wiring it like this and going all the way down and creating something really messy, I'm going to use object merge. And this is a shortcut to get that node down here. And what I want is dot dot. Well, that means one level up. So it's like that folder system on your windows. We called it object and you can start to see it object to destroy so we can highlight that transform into this object so we have the object to destroy down here now let's go back up i also need the one in position so that's this one drop down another object merge to get a shortcut to that so let's go dot dot again object and then we can see it right here now it's important that we reuse this specific geometry. Why? Because we're going to modify this geometry. And I'm going to show you. This is now no longer, the 24 points is no longer suitable. We need way more points for this. There's nothing to bend on. This doesn't have enough topology. This low polygon geometry was very well used for a fast iteration in the RBD simulation. But now that we're done the simulation, we need a high quality version of this geometry. You can just throw down a subdivide and let's choose this. So this is changing the geometry. It's smoothing it out. So if we come onto the algorithm, you choose open subdivide by linear, it will just subdivide it without changing the shape and the depth. I wanted something crazy points like crazy. However, okay, let's lower this down just a bit. It, it creates this weird geometry up here that I did not like. I wasn't too fond of this little star shaped topology. In my earlier testing, I actually use a different way of up the geometry and increasing the poly count of the geometry. In my tests, I use an additional geometry with high topology and project it onto the cylinder used within this project. But that method is a little more complicated. And in order to keep things simple and focus on RBD deformation, I've simplified the process by using just a subdivide node for up -resing. You're going to need a lot of points in order to get the RBD deformation to look right. Now, the more points, the better. Now, we need this into this position now. We can use the point deform to align the position of different objects. You have to feed in the object that you want to change or the object that you're trying to move around into the first input of the point deform. So that's our high poly object here. Next one or the next two inputs of the point deform will be the offset. Where is it starting and where does it end up with in order for Houdini to calculate the offset? So that's what the point of form does. So let's rest position. Where is it starting at? It starts off here, actually, because we're going from here to here. It's very important that the, the two things that you feed into the, the second and third input have the same number of polygons. So let's feed this into here because we start off here and then we end up here. So let's feed that in and let's double check. This one has 24 points. This guy over here has 24 points. Perfect. Two things that you feed into the two inputs, the second and third input, be the same geometry. It can be moved around, it can be tossed around, it can be deformed even. It has to be the same geometry. Now let's click this. And as you can see, we get our high object, our high poly in the starting position. So let's drop down this. 
to deform this high polygon using our RBD simulation. So we can use the point deform again. So let's go point deform, drop that down. Now again, the point of form. The first input is the object that we need to, we're going to be moving around. And that's this high polygon that's already in position. That's the one we're going to deform. So that goes into the first input. The second and third input of the point of form needs to be the offset. Let's get the offset of the simulation. Now, this is the simulation here. And let's move the timeline. Now it's moved. So we need the offset between here and here. Let's drop down a time shift, connect this. And I want the first frame. Control shift, left click. I want the first frame. So this will give me frame one, sim frame one. So now we have the starting position of the simulation. We plug that in here. The next thing is we want is the RPD sim current frame. So we take that. Well, this is just a null. So that will go into third input of the point to form. These two nodes will give me the offset, which is what the point to form need. Let's put this here. Now we're going to modify this high polygon using these two nodes as the offset calculation. Let's see what we got. Now what we need is a point where it crashes onto the ground. Okay, let's let's go back a bit. Okay, let's just go for it. We're going to turn on the real time rendering down here. So it doesn't go blazing fast here. I think it crashes here, here, this one. Okay, go here, can run. Okay, so we can see that this is crumbling up. Let's get a closer look. Like it doesn't look right. We What we can do is we can fiddle around with some of the parameters in the point to form and try to fix it. Minimum points, let's increase this. Okay, now it, it's smoothing it out, right? It, it's getting that estimation. As I increase the detection of the point of form to increase the num minimum number of points. So it's getting an average of the points, at least five nearby points in order to calculate where to offset it. It's looking at a radius 0 0.1. You'll find that this will improve more with a higher polygon count because here right now, here, this guy only has 1,154 points. That's not much. It'll really, really, really show when you start slapping in textures on it. So let's do that. In the next Basic Concept 6C video, I'll demonstrate how I set up UVs for this geometry and slap some really simple substance painter textures onto it. Then lastly, set up some redshift materials for rendering. I am considering creating a 6D video to demonstrate how to set up mantra materials, but let's see how my schedule turns out. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.